Well, here we go. Travis Rice and Kevin Backstrom. I mean, what do you call Travis? It hasn't been said. I mean, he's, he's the goat. He's the brainchild of this thing. Um, but he's not just here to, like, play like welcomer. He's, he wants to win. Being able to make it through qualification to get past Kevin Backstrom, which I did not set myself up for success with that choice. But um, being able to get to go up to Canada, compete at bald face, and in part going up as well to compete on the new venue that, we're, that we have up in Alaska this season. Um, you know, this is like, this is the first level, but probably the hardest level to get to the final boss. And I want the final boss. Just said chills down my spine. I told ya. And for even more context, this is the dude who drove to Utah and went and hit park jumps to train for this and then drove back, specifically because he wanted to get dialed in and get to that spot. And just knowing what a powerhouse snowboarder Travis Rice is, and he's on his home turf right now, I don't know if there's a rider in the field more well equipped to handle snow conditions like this. Starting things off with a oh huge God. cab five, but going down. Well. That, that just points to the conditions right there, because by all accounts, it looked like he had set that down solid. But as we saw in the previous two runs, these falls does not mean your run is over. So backside 360 from Trav, a little popper through the trees right there. And his line selection is really, really good on this run right here. Yeah, you're not seeing... Ooh. You're not seeing any tracks in this zone right here, so that's home field advantage for Travis. But you just saw right there the snow snake came up and got him. Trav's going to finish out his run. Well, how hard is the course? You just saw. Well, exactly. And the point's too, like, do you want to be a bigger rider with bigger trunks, more power, yeah. more strength? Or do you want to be light on your feet like this next guy, Kevin Baxter? All right, come on, Kevin. Let's go wide open for you. That's a live look at, at frustration. As uh, if now, if you're Kevin, you're like, wait, what? Yeah. Doors open? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We said at the top of the show, what did Kevin say? I got nothing to lose. I'm going up against Travis. Absolutely. More from Kevin uh, in, in his being in this position in his inaugural visit to Natural Selection. Yeah, I watched the Jackson event live last year on the live stream. I remember I was in a bar looking at it, and it looked, just looked so amazing. All the boys killed it, and yeah, looked like a fun event. When I got the call from Liam, I was out in France shooting with the Beyond Metals boys. And yeah, when I got the call, I got pretty shocked and hyped to get the invite. Like, it's one of the biggest things you can get as a snowboarder, I feel like, being part of this contest. So just really honored to, to be part of this. Yeah, there, there, there are no riders that are here as filler. No, absolutely not. This is a stacked field of competitors. I say Kevin Scott might have a little bit of an advantage. He's kind of made a niche for himself filming backcountry freestyle inbounds, and that's kind of, in essence, what this course is. Switch backside 180 to start things off. Yeah, I think an advantage that Kevin has is he's, Kevin is a very light-footed snowboarder. He's very fluid, he's got great line selection, and he's, he's just light on his feet. Big frontside air into that hip. Yeah, not doing the grab he wanted to do on that one, but he landed, which counts for a lot today. Backside 360, little wheelie out of it, but it did not interrupt his flow very much. So now yeah. slowing things down a little bit in the middle of the course. Kevin kind of getting eyes on where he wants to go next. Huge double shifty front three. Kevin Backstrom just put Travis Rice on notice. Yeah, right there. I mean, that's the type of trickery that Kevin Backstrom is about to the forefront. Wow. Oh, good legs, dude. 
She takes a little uh, full focus. Yeah. Um, hit the, hit the well put, around. man. Well put. Thank you, Doc. Seriously. Yeah. One up. Coming for your next yeah. run, though. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Watching in the bar in Gothenburg, Sweden last year, and then showing up and going, yeah, door open, I'm walking straight in. And so check this out. Very unlike Travis, he rode out of that cab five and then went down in the ride out. There's the backside three. Travis puts that down. And here we have Kevin Backstrom. Like he said, he had nothing to lose and he's going for it here. This might have been the closest Kevin came. I mean, he did not have a perfect full pull, but I mean, this right here, the front side three shifty, mm. going to be on every replay from today. And, and that's just Kevin Backstrom's style. It's a style that is uniquely his own. You can look up at the hill and see him riding down and know from a couple hundred feet away that that's Kevin Backstrom coming down the hill. All that back three with a nice little hello to the tree. That was, uh, that run was, 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 was nuts. And uh, when your peers, when your peers are the best in the world and they're doing that, it's a damn good sign. All right, Don. Let's go. And we knew what the outcome was going to be. It was just a matter of the numbers. All right, Travis Price. Beautiful day in jazz. All right. Oh. Here he is, the goat. He told you explicitly that he wants to be in the conversation come Alaska. Uh, and you got to make top seven to do that at this event. And he was in this exact position last year against Chris Rassman. Yes. Travis went on, answered back in run two, took the tiebreaker, and moved on to the quarterfinals, eliminating Chris Rassman. Let's see if he can do it against Kevin Backstrom. Are we going to get our first? tiebreaker performance. Travis is going to have to leave it all out. So T. Rice coming in switch. Cab five, finds some good snow, powers through, needles through the trees right there, and into some open terrain. Let's see where Travis goes. Back three, nose butter. And then coming off the side and clipping a tree. He's going to put that tree back. Environment first. Like a true gentleman. Well, he deviated, took a unique line right there. Not looking like it worked out the way he had hoped. Big old backflip. It is by no means over for Travis Rice, though. He is going to keep it going. That's the beauty of how this thing is judged. Is even a consequential fall, you can still take this round. Side 540, getting that last 180 around at the last second. He's like a cat, just always lands on his feet. Well, he has options. He knows this course better than anybody else. Other riders might not have thought to go far. Riders left to get at that last day. Where's the tree? I thought you were that. Ah, poor little guy. Oh, so bad. Little logging for the course. Yeah. Oh. All right, Baxter. Doors open. He salvaged, but he wanted more. Clear. If you're Kevin Baxter right now, is the weight of the world on your shoulders? Yeah. Have you gone from no pressure at all and nothing to lose to the inverse? There really are not many riders who can say they've had the chance to close the door on Travis Rice at Natural Selection. Well, Kevin had the highest score of the first run, which means Travis had the most ground to make up. And it'll be interesting to see if that's the case. Well, this is that part where what does the pressure of, of being at this event on this stage, this international broadcast, if it, if, it, if it starts to play with him at all, we'll see it in this run. I like the, the point that, that Pat made in Kevin's first run. Out of all of these riders, Kevin Backstrom has probably spent the most time filming inbounds. Lock Switzerland, similar terrain to a Jackson Hole. It's steep, gets a lot of snowfall, and he looks really comfortable <laughs> on this course. Starting things off with a switch backside 180 and a massive ollie. 
And I love how much fun it looks like he's having between every hit. Huge frontside air going down in the belly of that landing on the hip. Yeah, but not losing as much flow as other riders on the calls. Huge backside 360. That is a hallmark Kevin Backstrom trick right there. He makes those look so good with that shoulder dip at the beginning. And that's key when you fall to get a trick right away. Keep your flow. Massive frontside 360. That angle was incredible from the drone. Oh, yeah. Remember. Yeah. yeah. Well played. She's a burner. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, a real pleasure. Good. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs> it's an honor. No worries, man. Way to freaking keep it together. She ain't easy. She'll sap every little bit of uh, what you have. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> uh, this is nerve wracking. Let's take a look at the recap here. Let's break this thing down. Cab five from Travis Rice stomps that in fresh snow. And just this is where things go a little sideways. I don't think Trav had the speed to send that thing straight over. His, his kind of direc direction was a little bit off. I love how he just switched right into contest director mode, though, and said, let me just move this obstacle, replant this tree. And then a huge backflip from Trav. Well, with the exception of going off the side of that one feature, he's got to be stoked on a lot of elements here. It was a clean run. He just got a little bit off course. There's that back five where he just muscles that last 180 around. I'd imagine some riders are trying to get the GPS out, figure out where that last feature was in the course <laughs> with the fresh landing. This is going to be close, man. I mean, that switch back one from Kevin was Beautiful, and Kevin does go down right here. He does. So I think this is going to be a lot closer than a lot of people think. Backside 360. And then on his final hit, he goes front three. Double shifty. Yeah, that's a thing of beauty right there. Kevin Backstrom held it together quite well. I liked... I liked the fact that Travis was forced to put it on edge. Right here. Tiebreaker. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh serious? <laughs> Let's go for it. All right. One more round. I love it. Well, that tells it all. You Travis. Get wow. Because I replanted the tree. Travis saw what Kevin put down, wasn't quite sure what he put down, but you know, right there, we're going to our first tiebreaker. Um, we know about his ability to come back, his, his, his ability to, good, to dig deep, and if you think he's shaking, he then just suddenly shows you like, oh, that's, that's the guy who, that's, that's it, that's all guy. Well, and again, you know, Travis is the most influential backcountry snowboarder who has ever lived. He's so heavily associated with the backcountry, but as we all know, this dude's an X Games competitor. He's a US Open champion. He has a lot of competitive experience under his bibs. He actually beat Torstein Horkmo in the X Games Big Air. All right, so Travis starting things off. Huge cab five with the poke. Front side 360. Scrubs a little bit of speed there. And Travis Rice is looking locked in. Backflip, nose grab, scrubs a little more speed. You can tell he's a little more controlled in these runouts. He kind of knows what he needs to do, knows where he needs to slow down. And Travis is putting together a burner of a run right now. Switch back five. Wow. Sure looks like he landed that pretty clean. Don't poke the bear. Well, that's Travis's best run of the three we've seen today, for sure. You come at the king, you best not miss. There we go. Did you hear that? There we go. And you know who else heard that? Kevin Backstrom. He saw it, heard it, 
and felt it. And you could you imagine you're just like, oh wow, okay, that's right, that's who I'm up against. Yeah. What a moment though, what an opportunity for Backstrom. On the world stage, back against the wall, as he said, the night of the seating event, nothing to lose. He's like, I win no matter what. If Travis Rice knocks me out, I got knocked out by Travis Rice. If I beat Travis Rice, that's a pretty big deal. Bridges, as we see him look to the sky, what do you think is going through his head? Well, right now, I mean, similar to Travis, he's got nothing to lose. There is less strategy involved in this. The strategy is ride better than Travis. Mr. Baxter. You know, and he saw what he did. He's got every bit of what it takes. And Travis is pleased with that run. That was one of the best runs we've seen today on this course, hands down. It was powerful. It was fast. It had all the tricks. Very little uh, falling, bobbling. Like a superhero, he just was like, uh, let me just apply my, press my coat button, just go full coat right now. Well, it is almost unfair. He definitely knows the course like the back of his hand because he built it by hand. Mm. But Backstrom here, it's unique. Like, Kevin's, this is his third run in the course, and now he's got to be as comfortable as anybody is today. He's got the beta on the conditions. Only Travis has ridden it more. So switch back one from KB. And there you go, Wildcat on that little popper. So he is definitely looking to step up his first two runs. Big old straight air maxing out the hip, almost going off the back side of that thing he went so big. That's where he had trouble in the second run. There's the backside 360 from Kevin Backstrom. He's making his way down to the bottom portion of the course. Well, the one thing that you mentioned that might have helped Kevin back in the scoring of the second run, he didn't go over 360. And there it was, front side 720 Ooh. tail grab. Kevin Backstrom just put it down. Huge takeaway right there for Kevin. Yes. Oh hey, that's what it takes. Dude, I had to right. push him to at least ride it a little bit of his potential. Oh. <laughs> that seven was so nasty. Thank you, bro. Dude, so nasty. Amazing. Oh. oh. Holy. Dude, Dude. that freaking oh. Oh. I mean, talk about the mental game for Kevin. Not crumbling when Travis puts down that run. That was a beauty of a cab five with that rice poke midair. Into a front side 360. And this is when I knew Travis was for real because he was kind of holding himself back a little bit. He was like, I got to scrub a little bit of speed so I can hit the next feature. He knew exactly where he was going on this run and what he wanted to do. And there is that switch back five. And he stomped that perfectly. This is going to get very interesting. Kevin Backstrom with the switch backside 180. And then check this out. This is the moment I knew that Kevin was for real because before that was just a, a little ollie shifty. And they both comboed the, the top section so perfectly as you see him come back into this hip, this little gap to the hip and saying, nah, you're not gonna get me this time. No, and that's not just a stale fish. Right. That's taking the stale fish to the end zone. There's the back three there. His arms were waving a little bit. I could see the judges maybe docking him there on the execution, but not much here. Not much other than a frontside 720 tail grab that's done about as well as you can do that trick. Wow. I love that dip of the shoulder and just enjoying the ride. This is gonna <laughs> The kid is fluid. Kevin Backstrom is fluidity in motion. The rider tent explodes. Look at Sage, hands on his head. I was just going to say, do you think the fact that Travis rode switch through part of the course would have been the only thing I could pick that differentiated those two rounds? Yes, I think so. Yeah. It had to come down to be a factor. Yeah, I think so, and I think that, that top part of the course was just a bit more spicy.